Uh, right, C4 is 35p. That's an odd value. 35p, C4. I suppose it would help to turn all these up, wouldn't it? 15, is it? Goodness, these are really tiny. 403. 403. What's 403? 40. That's 40 nanofarads. That's a really weird value. Uh, that's a 104, and there's a 104. So those are the 100Ns. What's this 35? 502. 502. 403. Ah, there we are, 35. Actually, I suppose. I could put this 35 in the tester and see if the tester agrees that it's 35 picofarads. Just as a confidence check that I'm doing this capacitor stuff right. 36 picofarads. Well, that's pretty good. Okay. What was that then? 35 picofarad C4. Here we are, C4. It doesn't look like it's going to stay in, so let's give that a bit of blue tack. Now, of course, when I was driving around doing my field service, you'd uh, impress some customers with your ability to fix things and some days of course you weren't very good at fixing things and they wouldn't be very impressed but one customer in particular had said to me if you ever need a job come and see us and so when I left Linotype in 98 I had a brief period uh, trying to run a web design business but that didn't really work out so I went back to that customer and said, you know, you offered me that job. And he was absolutely true to his word. He said, yep, I did. He said, don't have anything in mind at the moment, but uh, you can come and do IT with us. So I did. And before long, well, no, actually, I was IT manager right from the beginning, I think. Uh, right, so now 35P, that was C4. C3, 82P, have I done that? Yep. C5 and 6, 502. Well, at least to a 502. Now, to my mind, 502 is 500. Oh, so that's 5n. Let's see if that comes up as 5 nanofarads. Uh, it's quite high, 5574 picofarads, but that's fine. That's 5.5 five nanofarads. Okay, that's good. Uh, two of those. 502. C5 and C6. C5. So, yeah, I did IT management. And the thing I found most fun there was the internet had come in. This was uh, 2000. And... No, 1999, I think. It needs a bit of blue tack. Yeah, 1999, I think I started there. Uh, so the internet was becoming important, and I was very interested in networking, so I sort of spent most of my time learning about configuring firewalls and routers and all that sort of stuff. I think it was all ADSL back then. I don't remember the internet being very fast. 512k rings a bell. Pretty slow, really. Uh, the other 502 is C6, 502, C6, where are you? Hmm. Well, I can see two things that look like C8. Will the camera focus? I must get a new camera. There's something up there that looks a bit like C8, something down there looks a bit like C8. Well, 
The one up there is very close to the inductor. So let's cross reference with the circuit diagram. There's a C4 up there, C2, oh, C8. Oh no, C3. See, I can't read this because the print's so bad. There's C8. Well, that is up near the inductor. So where's C6? C11. Ah, oh, it's another one of these wild goose chases. Perhaps I'll just leave it and move on. It'll become more obvious when there are fewer components. Uh, okay, so we got um, C9, 10, and 11, 403. 403, that's a really weird value. That's 40 nanothirds. Let's check it. 40 nanothirds. Oh, it's a bit low. Uh, 33.9, 34 nanofarads. But anyway, yes, that's the sort of thing. Now, what was it? Turn that off. Uh, 9, 10, and 11 are these 403s. Okay. Well, there's 10 and 11. And there's 9. So let's do 9 first. Yeah, so I don't have a degree because I failed it and got thrown out. I'm a college dropout. And then, of course, not so long ago, when I was trying to design the PWM5 solar charge controller, I needed to know about feedback control loops, control theory. And the degree course I was on was computing and control systems. It was all about control theory. And I could remember a few little bits and bobs, but I never really learned the, uh, the detail of it. But I fudged it and bodged it and got the uh, control loop working in the charge controller, one way or another. Uh, so 403s also go into 10 and 11. Perhaps I'll solder both these in together. Certain irony there, really. I've been studying control theory at college and didn't complete it, and then I needed it later on. Quite a lot later on in life, obviously. All right, let's get this in. I prefer to use my three and a half diopter glasses for this. But I'm sure this will work. Let's trim those. Okay, let's get the blue tack out. What else we got? Uh, right, 13 and 14. Should better remember that. C13 and 14, 104, which is. 100 N, so these are probably decoupling caps. Let's just check the circuit. 100 N. 100 N is normally used as a decoupling cap, although you wouldn't need decoupling in this. Just 100 microfarads. Uh, I can't see the 100 Ns. Oh, there's one of them. Oh no, it's just a very large capacitor uh, feeding this transistor. So that's possibly audio going through there. Uh, hmm, anyway, 100 ends they are, numbers again, I keep forgetting, 13 and 14, 100 here they are. Right, there's 13 and 14, they're both up here, let's do these together I think, 13 and 14, I can get the blue tack to hold both of these in. So, so yeah, I did three years, I think, at the, um, it was a print company in central London, in Shoreditch, as IT manager, I was very well paid, but the commute was 
absolutely hellish driving right through central London every day. I went in late to miss the worst of the traffic. I think I started around 10 or 10.30. They were quite easy going about timing. Uh, okay. Well, now we go on to the big capacitors. That's interesting. L1 is 1.5 microfarads. Hmm. And T1 is 7 kilobytes. What the heck is T1? 7 KB, that's really weird. Uh, but anyway, C17 is 47 microfarads. That's probably the small one. C17. Oh, we're at 10 minutes. I'll cut the, uh, cut the video. Uh, 